Good evening. Um, tonight we are convening uh, a public hearing um, addressing the uh, mayor's proposed administrative orders, which is the which was prescribed by the uh, city charter, the, the most recent city charter, <laughs> the one that we're functioning under now. Um, the mayor was required um, by the middle of last month to, I mean, by the end of last month to provide us with uh, his reordering and structure of the executive branch of government. The authority that the council holds is approval or disapproval of, of his proposals. Um, and we'll be discussing those tonight. There's a public hearing purpose of which is to um, take comments from the public and also uh, the, the mayor might have an opportunity to explain some questions that might be outstanding relative to these orders. And I should also let you know that the timeline is such that um, if, ever, if the counselors are satisfied with this meeting, then this will in all likelihood be on uh, tomorrow's agenda for a vote. If not, the fact is, is that we can still convene hearings right up until there's a 60-day deadline, of which we're now to our, I think our 12th or 13th day. Um, so there's an opportunity to have other meetings and other hearings relative to these issues. Um, to start with, uh, in the absence of nameplates, because our nameplates are actually still up at the JFK Middle School from a, a joint hearing that we had, of Council from Ward 6, Marianne Labarge, and uh, Council from Ward 7, Elisa Klein, Council at Large and Vice President of the Council, Jesse Adams, myself as I identified, City Council President Bill White, also at Large, Council from Ward 5, David Murphy. I am large, but I'm from Ward 5. It's not as large as me, however. I just need to. But I am from Ward 5. I do want to remind <laughs> you that. Uh, the, the honored and well traveled Council from Ward 2, uh, Paul Spector. <laughs> Uh, Councilor Ryan O'Donnell representing Ward 3 and Councilor Gina Louise Sierra uh, representing Ward, the, the good people of Ward 4. So uh, those of you keeping score at home and trying to figure out where to send your emails. Um, and first up on the agenda, I mean, I, and I'm not sure, I thought that we would go in order of the mayor's presentation and orders and, what, and I am going to read from um, the well would you actually you know if you would actually read from your cover letter if you have that handy that, that would have been my intention if i was alive. okay yeah um, recognize please do um, uh so uh, good afternoon honorable members of the city council and members of the public um i'm here today speaking pursuant to the submission of the administrative order uh pursuant to article six of the charter um and, and this administrative order of course is submitted uh uh, or organizing city government into operating agencies under Article 6 of the Charter of the City of Northampton, Chapter 277 of the Acts of 2012, and pursuant to the transitional provisions set out in Section 2 of said Chapter 277. Uh, Northampton City Departments and multiple member bodies are currently established by ordinance, charter, special acts, state law, or in some cases a combination thereof. Article 6 of the City Charter requires that, quote, the organization of the city into operating agencies to provide services and administer the government may be accomplished only through an administrative order submitted to the city council by the mayor, unquote. Section 2 of Chapter 277 provides that, quote, no later than September 30th, 2014, the mayor shall promulgate a series of administrative orders providing for the organization of city government into operating agencies under Article 6 of the Charter. This first ever omnibus administrative order is submitted in conformity with those requirements. The administrative order is arranged in a code format for organization and accessibility. The order is entitled Administrative Code of the City of Northampton and is divided into two major parts. Part one establishes 22 city departments organized into six divisions and describes the authorities and responsibilities of each agency. Part two establishes 26 appointed multiple member bodies and describes the authorities and responsibilities of each board, committee, or commission. Six city departments have been renamed to better reflect their mission or modern terminology. 
For example, Management Information Systems, MIS, has been renamed the Information Technology, or IT, department. Four multiple member bodies have also been renamed to better reflect their mission, modern te terminology, and in some cases to conform to state law. For example, the Tree Committee has been renamed the Public Shade Tree Commission to better reflect both state terminology and its independent role advising our tree ward, a DPW position also created by this code, and the Mayor on the preservation and expansion of our city's shade tree canopy. Three city agencies in part one have undergone more substantive changes to either their establishment process or their authorities and responsibilities. The city solicitor has been a direct appointment of the mayor since 1927. Previous to that, <coughs> previous to that the position was elected directly and along political party lines by the city council. Under my administrative order, the city solicitor will now be appointed by the mayor subject to confirmation by the city council. <coughs> This aligns the city solicitor appointment process with that of every other department head under our charter and better reflects the division of shared powers of the executive and legislative branches of our government. <coughs> the authority and responsibility of the renamed Parks and Recreation Department has, as its new name implies, been expanded to include oversight of the use and programming of city parks. The Board of Public Works previously held this authority in its role as park commissioners under a series of special acts repealed by this administrative order. This change better reflects the needed division of departmental responsibilities for maintenance versus programming of our city's expanding inventory of parks and recreational facilities. The Department of Public Works maintains its current name and mission, but absorbs many of the responsibilities and authorities that had been delegated to the Board of Public Works under a series of special acts repealed by this administrative order. This division of power between a DPW and a BPW, created in 1921, no longer conforms to modern local governmental structure, is often confusing to residents, and seemingly <coughs> creates an unelected third branch of government for public works, making fiduciary and policy decisions that are more appropriately delegated to either professional staff or the city's elected representatives. The dedicated and hardworking citizen volunteers who currently comprise the Board of Public Works will continue to play an important role in guiding our city's planning and investment in public works as the renamed Public Works Commission. This new commission will be advisory to the DPW as the department moves forward directly managing our city's public works and making recommendations to the mayor and city council on both policy and budgetary matters. For example, and of particular significance, the Public Works Commission will offer advice on future water and sewer rates that the DPW must recommend to the mayor, who, in turn, must submit the proposed rates to the City Council for final approval under Article 7 of the City Charter. Pursuant to Article 6 of the Charter, this administrative order is accompanied by a set of recommended ordinance amendments or deletions that must be simultaneously adopted by the City Council in order to fully effectuate the new administrative code. In most cases, this involves deleting ordinances that currently govern the establishment and responsibilities of departments or multiple member bodies. In other instances, the amendments are designed to implement agency name changes or shifts in responsibility. Finally, some of the ordinance changes eliminate multiple member bodies that have been long defunct or are better suited as ad hoc advisory committees. This administrative order represents the final major remaining unfinished transition item of the Special Act City Charter adopted by both the legislature and the voters of Northampton in 2012. It serves to complete our city's move forward to a new, more modern structure of local government featuring a clear and well-defined separation of powers between our executive and legislative branch of government. I want to personally and publicly thank my Chief of Staff, Lynn Simmons, who's here, um, who is the principal architect and author of this impressive and complex document. Its creation involved countless hours of painstaking research of city ordinances, special acts, historic documents and wills, and state law, as well as comparative research of other Massachusetts cities. 
Dozens of drafts, editing sessions, and legal reviews by city solicitor Alan Seewald later left the similarly painstaking task of cross-checking the completed administrative code against our code of ordinances to create the necessary ordinance changes and deletions. Our city owes Lynn Simmons a debt of gratitude for helping this mayor provide a strong foundation for the administrative organization of our city for future generations of chief executive officers to rely and build upon. And I respectfully request that the city council approve this administrative order pursuant to Article 6 of the, of the city charter. And I stand ready to answer any questions you have about the document or provide any additional information needed uh, for this public hearing and, and or your deliberations. Thank you. And I will uh, accept a motion to open the public hearing. Make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. <coughs> Did we get a second? Second. Yeah, there was a second. That's incredible. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So we are uh, officially convened. Now, um, I should consult with the council. I'm not sure if you want to work through the orders as they're written. Um, actually, as I look out in the audience, I can actually determine that there's a, there's one particular article that probably has favorable representation here uh, over some others. But we can move along. I, I think if we move through these deliberately, we should be okay. Do you have a do, do, are you suggesting move through them section by section? Well, I, I'm not, I mean, I, I don't know if that makes sense because I'm going I'm to guess that a lot of the sections are going to create no discussion whatsoever so maybe maybe we should move well, I could, do it I by could topic cite the sections and see if we if it stimulates okay. or tickles in energy and if, if then how's that is there is, is that okay with everyone you can Come. since you alluded to the fact that most of the citizens who were here are probably speaking to one section um, I wouldn't be adverse I think you were implying a possibility of moving that first and having that discussion was that what you were suggesting by I was saying anything at all about that? My only concern is that I don't want to, by doing so, then lose sight of any of the other sections. So I mean, it's if there were, but I'm fine um, with that. Making sure we all understand that we're just putting it kind of out of order um, for the sake of okay. convenience for a lot of folks who are here. And by the way, on the sign, I have three people on the sign-up list. I suspect there may be more people who want to speak, but uh, you you will not be excluded from speaking simply because you didn't sign up. It's just these folks get first bite. Um, well, what's the council preference? That would be my preference. You let them speak about what they wish to speak about and be on their way if they wish to. Okie doke. Um, this is inf for informational purposes for the council. So as we go, as we go forward, making our recommendations to the mayor, uh, subject to a vote, um, you're welcome to ask us questions as well. But you can also, if you have questions for the mayor, please direct them to me, and then we'll uh, give the mayor an opportunity to respond. That seems appropriate. So why don't we start with? That? And given that we have three people, and, and pretty sure they're speaking to the same item, I'm going to ask Lily Lombard to step up first. And, and, and by the way, uh, when you do step up to speak, please uh, state your name and address. Sure. Good afternoon. I'm Lily Lombard. I live at 39 Monroe Street. Thank you for holding this public hearing today. I am here to um, address the creation of the Public Shade Tree Commission and the tree warden position for the city. Um, before I do, I just want to give a little bit of context. I know I've spoken to a lot of you individually, but I think it can't hurt to just zoom out for a second and go, why, why are we thinking about this? So the history is that for the past 10 years, the, uh, there has been a tree committee that was by ordinance given the responsibility of acting as tree warden. And um, that unfortunately was more in name than in reality. And there was a frustrating history there of um, poor collaboration with the DPW, difficult um, communications, uh, no budget, uh, uh, the tree committee being given no authority over budgetary issues. Uh, and the, the, the sum gain was a decline in the overall tree canopy, 
um, a very demoralized uh, body of citizens who gave their time to this issue, and uh, really no comprehensive, at the end of the day, no comprehensive work on what it means to have a tree management and planting program in Northampton. So we're at this new place where we can clean, uh, wipe the slate clean, start over, and this is a great opportunity to do it with this restructuring. So I'm grateful for that. Um, in um, studying this history myself, because I was at the, at the very beginning, at the very early stages of it 10 years ago, and then I, I'm jumping back in nine years later, spent the last year studying this issue a lot, interviewing some of the people that really struggled on that committee, and some of them are here with us today, uh, and um, also interviewed a lot of communities that had some exciting tree programs. And what I learned was that a, a tree warden is central to the ex execution of a, of a healthy tree program and that it's not a small job. It's, it's really quite an awesome undertaking if you're gonna do it right, if you're gonna be comprehensive about it. So um, I, I would have liked to have had the opportunity to share a lot of those um, impressions and um, suggestions for for the language to go into this document with the mayor, but unfortunately I wasn't given that opportunity. So it feels a little bit um, a little bit difficult for me now to jump in at the last minute when there's an up or down vote and say, here's what I, w here's what I would suggest for language. Nevertheless, this does seem to be my public opportunity, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I am in favor of a tree warden position. And I do believe that the tree warden should be housed within the Department of Public Works. So I will say that. Uh, I, I would also say, as, as equally strong, that the tree warden needs to be a dedicated staff person. Not necessarily a full-time staff person, but a dedicated staff person. Uh, the, the broad still skill set that's required of a tree warden, um, including grant seeking, uh, collaboration interdepartmentally with planning, you know, zoning issues, public works for sure, uh, interfacing with the public, helping to usher forward a vision, a really strong vision for a healthy tree canopy, galvanizing all the resources that are out there on the federal, state, and local level for making that happen. Um, so in um, speaking with the mayor recently, I learned that that is not his current vision. I would like to just say publicly that that is our vision, and I think I have a lot of people here with me who share that vision. If you would just stand up, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Um, and uh, that, uh, I, so whatever sort of interim plan we have for, Nor for Northampton as we move toward, a, I think, a more ambitious a vision, just know that citizens hold that as a vision. So that's my first comment. The second is that I am in favor of a public shade tree commission that advises the mayor and the tree warden in all uh, policy programs, uh, ordinances, anything that is pertaining to trees. Uh, I think that the language that is currently there, okay, thank you for putting that up, um, has some, some narrow roles that I would, not, I would not advise being in there. It says the commission works to inventory, inventory current trees and selects new trees for planting. That, is, um, that feels very narrow and that feels like public works. That does not feel like the role of an advisory. Uh, especially the I inventory current trees. That feels like something that should be done by a professional. It's actually very technical work. Um, and selecting new trees for planting, that is fine, but the, the, the work of the tree commission can be so much bigger than that. Uh, so I wouldn't want that sentence to somehow be implied that that is the narrow role of the, of the commission. Um, and then I have already submitted to both the mayor and to a number of you some other language that I feel gives a little bit more heart and soul and purpose to the um, tree commission that, um, that is not in there. Uh, so uh, I can submit it again formally if you want, but it is, uh, you know, it's basically saying why bother? Why, why have this commission? We have this commission because it forwards our goals of public health, of economic vitality, of environmental sustainability, 
of creating a, a town that is resilient in the face of climate change. And for me, that is really the heart of why I do this. I, I see trees as such a valuable infrastructure that help on all of those points. They're not, they're not, a, minor, they're not a minor infrastructure in our town. They are really critical to our health. They help us breathe, literally. Uh, so I, um, I respectfully submit those <coughs> comments. And I, I realize that you're in the awkward position of voting up or down. I'm not going to fall on my sword if you vote up and that this moves forward. But I hope that my, um, my comments will feed some um, important future discussion. Thank you. And, uh, Lily, your comments will be included in the public document and the public record as well. OK, thank you. Um, Deb Jacobs, please. I'm Deb Jacobs, 82 Grove Ave Leeds, and although I didn't just stand up, I certainly agree with a great deal that Lily said. I'm a former member of the tree committee, um, and I don't um, feel as negatively about it. Um, I think that the tree committee was able to um, accomplish some things. A new committee is always um, takes a while to get going. I think that we were able to get some language into um, uh, through the planning um, office for uh, tree planting and developments, and we were also able to get quite a bit into Vision 2020. Um, that having been said, I certainly agree with Lily that um, I think the role of the tree committee could be expanded and should be. Um, I, <coughs> I. I, I'm not. I, I'm not sure how how to go into this next piece because um, e you've broken it down by sections, and the trees that are in the new parks division. Uh, it's not clear to me who has jurisdiction over that. It would it be the new uh, recreation and parks division? Um, would it be uh, how would those trees? Um, be handled because they're not technically under state the state definition public shade trees, which are trees within the public right of way. Um, so I do have that question. Um, I also, as much as I would like to see a tree warden and um, the uh, uh, shade tree commission uh, revitalized. I, I, I'm very bothered by the process um, that this has, um, has gone through. Um, I was totally disheartened to read in the paper that um, the council had not been communicated with. Um, just because you can make your own decisions doesn't mean that communication isn't important. I think the city has a history um, in terms of uh, the planning board certainly has brought um, items to uh, the council that they had the ability to uh, determine, but brought them to the council um, uh, for a vote. And there was, there was, I think communication is really key. And I, I, I am disappointed. I also would hope that you would have more public hearings because even if somebody um, is watching at home on TV and emails you, I'm sure you all get many more emails than you can sort of whip through and really give it some thought between now and um, a vote tomorrow. So I would um, respectfully um, request that you vote it down until um, uh, all these questions are answered. Thank you. And embedded in that was a question specific to policy that uh, perhaps the mayor wants to address the who, who would uh, have jurisdiction over the the proposed trees I'm presuming in Pulaski Park for, for, for one. Certainly, if you reference the other piece of the part of the order that refers to the Department of Public Works and the, and the, um, the, the Parks and Rec Commission, the Department of Public Works would still maintain, um, uh, would still be responsible for maintenance, tree planting, et cetera, within all of our city parks and recreation areas. And, and by default, the tree warden would be involved in that process. So, um, and Deb, were you asking about initial plantings or uh, or maintenance? The whole vision of, of trees in the parks. Again, um, that would be that would be uh, again the same sort of collaboration that occurs now bef between the recreation 
um, department, example, you know, the design of Florence Fields, for example, and then working with the um, Department of Public Works for ongoing maintenance, construction, uh, et cetera, care of, care of trees and shrubs. And part of the design plan for Pulaski Park now um, has suggestions about trees and treescape. Um, it does. Those are being refined as part of the as part of the um, final design documents. <laughs> yes, um, but again, those would be those would be like all all trees on city property would be maintained by the DPW, shade trees or any other non shade trees that are owned by the city. Thank you, uh, Deb. Did you want to follow up comments about that? Or? I saw you shaking your head, so I wanted to give you the opportunity. Um, General Lee, if you would do that at the oh, microphone, sure. please. Uh, per Mass General Law 87, which is the law that um, establishes the tree warden, uh, the, the tree warden has care over all of city trees except for those within parks, unless the park commissioner or anyone there of appoints that role back to the tree warden. So he or she has. Um, has control and care over uh, city trees, excluding trees in parks, unless specifically given that role. Um, Adele Franks is up next. Oh, do you want to respond to that? I can say that we have um, this order deletes the park commissioners and does transfer that authority to the DPW, so to the Department of Public Works. So that 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 covers that particular concern. Um, there you go, Adele. You're up. Hi, my name is Adele Franks. I live at 123 Black Birch Trail. And I'm here to speak in favor of the uh, Public Trade um, Tree Shade Tree Commission and also for it to have a compelling and explicitly stated um, mission that goes beyond the proposed one. A few years ago, I had a very disappointing experience with the Tree Committee when um, I had researched. Uh, some grant opportunities to purchase trees for Northampton and I approached the t tree committee uh, to collaborate on that and the response that I got was imperceptible. Um, there just really wasn't any interest and I found that extremely disappointing. So, so I have a, um, a very strong interest in having the mission of this new Shade Tree Commission um, include a very explicitly uh, responsibility for seeking funds uh, for the purchase, planting, and care of trees. And so I would like to see that. And other, th other th uh, things be added to the mission statement for this commission uh, so that we can have a strong and effective and accountable uh, shade tree commission in the future. Thank you. Did you Adele, did you have anything specific that you, uh, I mean, anything specific uh, language that you want and Lily has presented us are basically you speaking in support of what Lily's recommendations are or do you have any other recommendations beyond uh, I could certainly submit some uh, some specific recommendations I don't have them with me right no, this that'd moment. be fine that'd be great if you and we can include those in the public record as well right okay. now and then. thank you very much Thanks. um that's all we have signed up now is there anyone else who's interested in speaking on, on this point, Sarah. I'm Sarah Metcalf. I live at 93 Bancroft Road. Um, I want to explicitly support Lily's suggested amendation about the definition of the role of the Shade Tree Commission and of the warden. Um, I like the idea of broadening the articulated mission because it creates a context for the work that the commission would be doing and that the tree warden would be doing, a way of evaluating competing interests that might have to do with shade trees that are in place that someone might propose should be taken down, to be able to explicitly refer to the benefits that those trees offer in terms of you know, water runoff or improvement of air quality, improvement of human health, and mitigation against the effects of climate change in general. And also, I think that specifically referring to the um, goal of making Northampton um, a sustainable community 
and, and specifically referring to climate change in that context is very, very important. I think it's important in an ongoing way for all public planning. Uh, a couple weeks ago, a number of us were marching in New York in a giant parade of people who were expressing the most profound sense of urgency about the trajectory of the planet. And yet, strangely, when it comes down to the daily business of city life and, and all of our lives, that overriding, urgent emergency tends to disappear into the background and almost to become a kind of um, boutique concern. But it isn't. You know, It's really at the core of what all of us should be thinking about all the time. So I just think it's very important to put explicit language into our revised charter, and especially with regard to the tree warden position, that, that makes it clear that that's the underpinning, undergirding um, kind of concern that we have that makes us be interested in the well-being and the replanting of trees at all times. Thank you. I, and just for clarification, Sarah, the, yeah. this is not char embedded charter language. This is, this is administrative order from the executive branch so yeah that's he's the mayor is the one who essentially crafted the language for that the charter in and of itself is a, is a it's a much larger document than right okay I didn't use the correct language to describe just, these these proposed changes okay. these are the okay yeah. very good I'm sorry I just I no. was, just want to be clear so yeah good thank you um, anyone else no else with Ed <coughs> Uh, my name is Ed Shanahan. I live in Fairway Village in Leeds. Uh, I hadn't intended to say anything, but um, f uh, following up uh, Lily, is, uh, uh, there's not much you can add to what she had to say. However, just because you name, rename the, the, uh, the organization from the Tree Committee to the Public Shade Tree Committee doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's going to function any differently. Uh, my experience on the tree committee over the few years was a lack of interest on the part of the city from pretty much top to bottom in trees. Uh, this was particularly true of the Department of Public Works, which was uh, not only supposed to do the planting and the restoration of trees, uh, almost every year more trees were cut down than were added in the city. And this was over the span of several years. Uh, so my point is that if the experience of the tree committee is uh, uh, something that we're uh, anticipating, I don't think that uh, <coughs> this is going to do the job. Uh, the other thing about the tree committee was that even when we had suggestions about how to raise money um, there was a uh, very little constituency for following through on that. Um, I think there sh there needs to be an energized and motivated uh, shade tree commission that will plug into the public and get them interested in this. It's not enough to just create the commission. You need to uh, make it visible, and the tree committee was was anything but visible. I hope this works better. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else interested in speaking to the trees? I am. Hi, my name is Barbara Beach. I live at 16 Fort Hill Terrace. And I'd like to say that I am in total support of what Lily has to um, say about having a tree warden. Uh, and I'm speaking here, and I just said, Lily, I think if I get up there, I'll start crying. But she says, well, start crying then. <laughs> so, because <laughs> I feel that strongly about trees. And on the way here tonight, I walked up Fort Hill Terrace, my darling little street, that is replete of uh, many trees that were there before us, according to many neighbors. They said, oh, you should see how beautiful Fort Hill Terrace used to be. Oh, there was trees, it was just beautiful. I just came back from uh, New Mexico, and every single place, and I speak in the spirit of John Muir here, um, that was beautiful, was resplendent with trees. 
I guess I speak from an artist's point of view, aesthetically, rather than uh, the committees and the commissions and whatever, because I, I don't know how to make them work or support them. But um, it is extremely important that we plant trees in our community. If we cut down one tree on the way up, you know, on, on the, the way up Fort Hill Terrace, you tell them, Barb, you tell them, we need to have more trees. And then another person, I'm walking down the street, oh, I'm going to a tree thing. Oh, yeah, we need more trees. And I mean, it's there, it's obvious, it's real. It's for sure that we need more trees. And how we get them, I'm just here to support a person that I think might just make it happen and maybe get that tree warden. And how do, I'm just here to also wonder how I can really make it emphatic to my town and my people that how important this is. So I respectfully ask you and beg you to consider this so we can indeed get a shovel, get a bunch of trees, get some compost, and do that physical act of planting some trees in our in our town would you all not agree that we need them i mean i mean do, do, not not a rhetorical question uh yes we do we do need them uh, is i'll answer for myself I this started from my beloved i mean my love for my lovely little sweet precious pulaski park and yeah let's plant some trees i my, I, I would be willing to give some money and i don't have much i would give a thousand dollars if i could have not I, the world, the universe, we could have some beautiful, like when you walk through Washington, D.C. and you see the flowering ch cherry trees. Um, I, would, I would pay for those trees. Some, I would do it. Um, but I think I have to take a step beyond the emotion and support somebody that I think might do that job and, and be part of it with the community of peoples in this, in this world that, that know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we must plant more trees. Thank you so much. I didn't mean to emote, Thank but you. I didn't cry, so that's a good sign, well right? Done. Well done. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for your advocacy and your, and your contributions. My name is William Albert, and I also live in 93 Bancroft Road. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't actually planning to say anything, but uh, Sarah used uh, a lovely phrase, which is, sometimes things can become <coughs> concerns. And it, it's been very clear that the tree committee has unfortunately become something of a boutique concern. I'm the co-chair of the Social Justice Committee next door at the Unitarian Society, and our uh, youth group tried to plant trees last year. But they left messages, they couldn't get through to anybody, they weren't able to plant any trees. So I know that that's a long process and there are probably lots of reasons. I don't want to blame anybody, but I do want to say that clearly this shouldn't be a boutique concern. It needs to have whatever resources, whatever languages, language is required to make it really the issue that it is for, for the average person, if you ask them. And I think all it takes is a quick look at some photographs that Lily Lombard has sent around. The difference between a neighborhood 50 or 60 years ago that has lots of beautiful trees and one now that doesn't is huge. Yes. It, it affects on the property values. It affects, I mean, it affects so many different things. Lily's got a wonderful presentation. So I just wanted to say that again, bear in mind, this has become a boutique concern. It has become an issue because it is a boutique concern and it shouldn't be. That's all. Thank you very much. Paige. Greetings, my name is Paige Bridgens and I live in Ward 3, 12 Northern Avenue. I laud Lily for pulling all of this together and fully support her proposition. Um, and I, I feel that getting trees planted is just part of what needs to happen. There's a lot that needs to happen before that. Site assessment needs to happen in a much more thorough way than it has been happening. Trees have been, putting, been being put in inappropriate places. Um, somewhere in town here is a Metasequoia glyptostroboides. This is a, a John, Dawn Redwood under 15-foot wires. 
you know, I mean, if this is someone's art installation, it could be entitled <laughs> Imminent Doom <laughs> as this tree approaches these wires. Um, look at King Street, where, um, now I don't want to cite any particular businesses, but um, if you were going past Greenfield Savings Bank, you might notice that the mounds, there are these mulched mounds. These are called volcano, this is called volcano mulching at the base of each tree. They're roughly two feet high. This creates an environment in which insects can get into the bark and, and deteriorate these perfectly fine trees that they planted. And so I think that having a dedicated arborist who yes. is the warden would um, ensure that trees are being put in the right place and under conditions that will ensure their thriving and and, and will hold people accountable. I mean, every time I go by that King Street, I think, okay, I'll call Greenfield Savings Bank, you know, when I get home. And then I never do. But I can imagine a warden ahead of time saying, you know, okay, so you're required by law to plant these trees. Here are the standards. Here are the best practices that you need to adhere to, to ensure the survival, to ensure that um, ecosystem services will be most effectively um, happening in that space, you know, rather than just, for example, one after another tree of the same species to have biodiversity. Um, you know, there are many, many issues that a tree warden would, yes. it would just come so naturally to and, and, and then there are volunteers planting trees in town, and, and this is so great that people are putting money and energy into this. What we need is money and energy, but we also need skill, people who will really be able to nuance the planting and the care of these public trees. Thank you so much, and I really urge you to to vote for this proposal. I don't know a whole lot about it, but it is pro-tree and Lily wrote it and I want you to listen up to what she has to say and what she's pulled together here. Thank you so much. Thank you. <coughs> uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak to the Shade Tree Commission point? Deb. Um, Deb Jacobs, I just wanted to um, clarify one thing that um, I think that there's a difference between um, creating a, a public shade tree commission and adequately uh, budgeting for um, planting and maintaining trees. And I'm not sure, perhaps you could ask the mayor if those are separate things. I mean, I think they're both um, phenomenally important. Um, sure. Uh, thank Ron, you. you want to? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, in this current fiscal year, uh, I have increased the budget for tree and shrub plantings um, uh, effectively by eight times what it was in the prior 10 fiscal years. Um, it's previously, it's been stuck at $5,000 for the last, uh, as long as far back as I could look in budget books. Um, and my current budget allots $40,000. And my goal, of course, is when we get this tree commission up and running, when we have a, uh, you know, a tree warden um, working, well, I actually need to correct something. I do need to say something about the DPW um, in terms of what the city is doing with regard to trees. Um, about three years ago, well, stepping back, when people talk about some of the issues regarding the DPW's ability to care for trees, um, it's, no, it's not a big uh, shock to you guys that the DPW underwent some serious reductions in staffing. Um, over a long period of time through a series of recession, you know, starting with Prop 2.5 and, and then recession after recession. Um, so that really did inhibit the department's ability to perform some of these other functions in addition to the core functions that they perform. Uh, over the last three years, we've rebuilt that. And so 
I, I want to be clear that we have right now uh, in the city, we have a crew of staff that are uh, primarily dedicated to working on tree-related issues. They, we have a, you know, we have a two certified arborists. Um, we have um, uh, two tree climbers. We have a, a truck operator that operates the the, uh, the tree bucket truck. Um, and then we have obviously uh, Rich Parcelletti who oversees that work. There's a that that crew is on average spending about 35 hours a week now uh, working on um, issues related to trees in the city. Um, and what I envision, what I what I hope out of this is by reformatting this tree uh, committee into a tree commission um, to play a more direct advisory role to the tree warden. Um, I think that's. The, I think that was one of the disconnects, and I've heard about it. I've heard about it tonight. That that for some reason there was this tree committee, but it wasn't really directly linked to the people that were working on trees in the city, uh, for the city. In some some cases, that's because there wasn't anybody. Probably when when Deb got started on the committee ten years ago, there may not have been. Um, we hadn't rebuilt that piece of our of our uh, you know infrastructure in terms of personnel. Now we do have that. And I think what this proposal does is actually directly links uh, the person who would be in charge, who, who currently oversees that crew. And, and Rich Parcelletti himself right now spends on average about 15 hours a week working with that crew, overseeing that crew. Um, our, uh, the, the business director up at, um, up at the DPW spends a, estimates about five hours a week currently processing work orders related to inputting and processing tree related work orders. Many of you have constituents that call because there's a limb that looks dangerous or after storms there's limbs down and you're in there's stumps that uh, sometimes have to be ground. There's a whole series of ongoing maintenance and plantings. Uh, there have been um, plantings each year um, and Mr. Parcelletti, you know, has, has said, and he said it publicly, that, you know, we, we did fall behind, uh, you know, several years ago, and we've been trying to catch up. So I think that um, I, what I see out of this, I, I really, you know, I, I guess if the concern is about words on a piece of paper, I mean, those words are empty without a financial commitment and without a commitment of staff and resources. So I'm less concerned about the words on the page, frankly. Um, I also have to correct the record. I did meet with Ms. Lombard. Ms. Lombard met with me prior to the issuance of this order. I gave her time to give me the same PowerPoint presentation that she gave to many of you in my office. And I've also had conversations as a result of that with many city councilors who contacted me based on her lobbying of them to contact me. So um, while it may be fair to say that I didn't consult you on every word in the document, I do think that this is one of the areas of the document where there was a lot of robust consultation. And I look around the room and I know I've had conversations with many of you based on that. So, uh, so I wanted to just uh, address that issue in terms of why I think the funding is significant and also the commitment of staffing and resources. And what I see is having, this tree war having the tree warden work directly with the committee and have that committee help guide the work uh, that the tree warden, guide and support the work that the tree warden is doing. Um, and, and I want other counselors to have an opportunity to speak, but one of my takeaways from my conversations and also when I hear yours, um, essentially going from, essentially doing triage, no pun intended, and moving towards a, a proactive uh, development of treescape that would uh, that would be sustainable so as opposed to reacting to the loss of trees or addressing trees that are falling apart at the same time expand and enhance the treescape that so it would be uh, an enduring legacy and I should just say by the way Paige that Sequoia belongs to Smith uh, Smith College has a, a wide variety of of non-indigenous trees that are magnificent, <coughs> but of course out of our scope of service, and, and there it's a gift. I know of one at Smith for sure, but what I'm talking about is one that's on a on a Northampton Street under water. We have an errant sequoia. Yeah. Yes. That's <laughs> good to find out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, do we, uh, uh, other counselors? I just have a question in terms of process for you, since we're going to be speaking about this at other times. Is it appropriate for us to? Ask questions of the mayor. Um, what, uh, how do you see this? Yes, the mayor. Uh, if the, the, I think, given 
the, the way we're moving, I think the most efficacious way to do this is if questions arise during this process that we have of the mayor, that's probably the best time to ask them. Okay. I think. So may I ask him one related to this mayor? Yes. It, it, it may be just a, a, for you to comment on something because we were both involved with this together that a number of years ago, I think a similar, we had a energy committee or energy commission, I think it was a committee that was active for a while and then was very inactive for a lot of years. I think a very similar thing that we saw with the tree committee, some of the same frustrations. And then from that, there was a period where um, a, someone was hired specifically to work with the Energy Commission. <coughs> we hired um, Chris Mason to become kind of an energy person for the city, a specific Energy role. officer. Yeah. yeah. And he then became the, the uh, liaison with that committee. He became the, uh, and, and I wonder, do you have that same, in, in relation to this, the, the tree committee, how it's been functioning, the fact that there's been a lot of frustration that it then wasn't really functioning, how do you see that in relation to, does that, is that a similar analogy to the Energy Commission? And I mean, it's analogous in that, in like the, like the, tree committee that you know the energy committee or energy resources committee um, had begun to, to dwindle it didn't really have a strong connection to city government it, you know it was, it was citizens that were sort of working on their own and trying the best they could but it really didn't have a good connection to the city to the actual folks who needed to shape policy and and in some yeah. cases our own internal policy as a city around our energy usage so uh, I know the then mayor had had decided not to keep reappointing people to the committee because we wanted to reformat following uh, Sustainable Northampton. Yeah. And so after Sustainable Northampton, I know um, the, the council drafted the ordinance and, and I think I may have been one of the first councilors to serve on the energy and sustainability. We had also gotten grant money to hire Chris Mason and he's become kind of the facilitator and the point person in that body, again, is an advisory body and it helped provide a sounding board um, and advice and recommendations to not only Chris, but the mayor, the city council on issues related to energy and sustainability. Um, and I sort of see that same thing happening here. Um, and to be clear, uh, though, you, you know, you wouldn't, you may not, you, hearing the way things are framed tonight, I mean, I am in very big support of of the importance of trees and our tree canopy as part of you know all the issues that have been mentioned sustainability i mean it's called out in our in our sustainability plan um and i'm and i have made a commitment to that and i will continue to make a commitment about it and i can't speak for what happened in the past i can only talk about what i'm committing to i've spoken to the dpw about this i've had you know i did have conversations with them about this structure they're quite clear about my expectations about how this will work going forward. Um, and they understand that I'm putting the resources behind it and we are, we are committing the personnel to it. Um, and I guess I just wanna, I, I wanna allow the body to have an opportunity to get formed, get started, get working before it's declared a failure seemingly, before it's even had an opportunity to get started. Um, and then the only other thing I would say is that, you know, th this, this first order is sort of the, you know, the, the mother of all administrative orders because it's sort of the first one we did had to take everything and migrate it into one place. Um, you know, I, I, if, if this committee begins meeting and begins working and has ideas or recommendations for how its scope needs to change or how structure needs to change, that's something they can recommend to me. And I can certainly, um, I can issue I can issue administrative orders anytime I want to the council, making any kinds of changes, uh, you know, mergers, you know, whatever it is that, that has to happen. So this isn't set in stone forever. Um, this is the first of what could be several administrative orders. So, you know, that's my expectation. Yeah. You saw yeah, I don't, yeah. Just, I don't question at all your commitment to the planting of trees and these other things. I'm just talking about the process, especially in terms of the tree warden, mm -hmm. just from my own experience yeah. uh, now in the Energy Commission, but also being one of those counselors who was pushing the former mayor and for a number of years. That yeah. What that process, it seemed to me, and I'm not sure it's analogous, but what seemed to me was we went out and hired somebody who was really good at this one specific job in a lot of ways, knew how to get money, knew how to connect, knew how to work with the city. And then it seemed that then that energy commission kind of took off. And uh, 
I think has done a great job. Yeah. So I, I'm just. We well, actually have to thank the residents of Northampton because they, they, uh, you know, they uh, subscribe to the Green Up program right. in record numbers, out of proportion to the rest of the Commonwealth, and it was actually that grant money that initially hired uh, yeah, hired I, right. Chris Mason, and and you know he's been he's been more than worth his more than worth that salary. He's probably you know I can't even imagine how many times he's doubled. That what we spent I agree. on that and all the savings and other grants that so he's been able to use. What I guess I'm saying is, I, my my guess is that you have that same kind of vision that if mm -hmm. there is a tree warden, who it is, that when there is a tree warden, that that person too will be very much like a Chris Mason. That that'll be somebody who's skilled in a lot of areas, including the ability to either motivate the public to get involved, as we heard somebody already contributed a thousand dollars, maybe someone yeah, else will match that. The, uh, but who knows how to get that check before I Yeah. Leave. Who knows how to do that, who knows how to get grants as well as expertise. And my you know, in talking to you about it, I think that's your vision as well. It is, that, and that but again it's not I mean a part of this is the you know, like any of our um, you, know, you know, the Energy and Sustainability Commission serves as a kind of a public forum, as a way for the public to access, you know, our energy programs and our sustainability programs, and is often, you know, co-sponsors significant, um, you know, policy recommendations that Chris brings forward and helps affirm the work, you know, again, he, he brings things to the commission that he's working on to, to, to be a sounding board and to give him affirmation, is he headed in the right direction? Is this what we think, where the city should move? And I, and I view that the same way with, with what this Public Shade Tree Commission would do. I also would say that we, you know, we have on the Energy and Sustainability Commission um, a lot of experts, you know, people that are energy uh, experts and people that work in the industry. And so there's also a lot of expertise on the commission and a lot of energy, you know, energy, that's probably not a good term for the Energy Commission, but a lot of, a lot of uh, folks who aren't just, it's not a debating society, there are folks that are there contributing, helping craft proposals, helping Chris um, proofread proposals, you know, helping him uh, access information. So, and I would see the same thing happening with a Shade Tree Commission. I would see a commission that's involved and that's helping, you know, identify, you know, possibly helping identify grant opportunities, helping to write grants, working with the tree warden on that, uh, on those kinds of projects, fundraising. Um, Arbor Day events, uh, you know, all the kinds of things that, that a robust uh, tree commission does in other cities. Councilor Shara and then uh, Councilor uh, Labarge. Yeah, yeah. Speaking exactly to that point, how, um, what, what's the process for, for peopling this committee? How, how would people be appointed to it to ensure that, that it's a robust? Well, I think uh, it'll follow the same process as all of our other city committees. Um, in the preamble to the administrative order, sort of the first section, if a committee doesn't specifically have some other appointment mechanism, then it's our standard appointed by the mayor subject to the confirmation of the city council. So I, you know, if the council passes this order, there will be several committees that I will be putting out a call for people to serve on and asking them to submit information. Um, and, uh, and we'll be, you know, working to select people and send them to the city council for their vetting and their approval um, so that we can get the committee up and running. Yeah. Yes, um, Mayor, how much should you say as far as the financial part on the budget that will be added on for the... Well, in, my, in anticipation of this change, of, of this change and of knowing that, you know, we wanted to, this was a priority, um, we had been spending, we had, uh, there's a line item, you can find it in your budget books if you go back, you know, 12, 13, anyone before that. In the, um, I think it's in the streets department, it's a line item called trees and shrubs. It's been $5,000. Um, in this budget that, um, that you approved for the current fiscal year, we increased that to $40,000. Um, and again, my expectation is that this, uh, this body and this tree um, warden would be helping inform the department's budgetary, you know, submissions and their budgetary, um, you know, what they're projecting they need. Um, you know, again, th there's been sort of a number just sitting there at, at that same number for many, 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 many years. Um, I have to say, if you look at that figure at $5,000 going to 40000 I think you as our mayor are going in the right direction. I do not have a problem with putting in a brand new public trade commission. 
and I'm being serious about this, but I agree with Councilor Spector. I think once this commission is put in place, I think we need to look at the people that will be on that committee, that they are experts on this. And I also do want to say, with the reconstruction of Route 66, you were not even the mayor there. You were a councilor at large and a councilor also, and had great concerns coming to meetings on Route 66 of helping us try to save some of the most valuable maple trees that were out there. And you were very upset. So what you're saying, I believe, that you will make sure that we will have trees, we will have an arborist in our city of Northampton, and we will have a good commission put in place so that, yes, we're hearing tonight, we need trees, and I know as a mayor, you will go forward. And again, I just want to say, it's, again, it's just like I say, it's not about the words on the page. It's not about the, it's not about the line item. It's really how we utilize those resources. I mean, we could have money, but if we don't spend it, then or if we don't actually put it to the best use, that may be trees. That may be, you know, that may be a, a, a an inventory. It may be, you know, in our public works department, as the council well knows, we often fund. Um, planning studies about you know what we should be doing for our stormwater infrastructure our sewer infrastructure what we should be doing in terms of a road map over the next 25 years we may want to allocate funds for a road map uh, regarding um, our shade tree inventory um, you know and you see a lot of this is happening in other parts of the state primarily in gateway cities where the state has put a particular emphasis on funding that we don't have access to those kinds of funds that the Holyoaks and the Lowells and some of the gateway cities have access to. So we're going to have to try to provide it ourselves, either through city funds or, or potentially financing. grants or fundraising. Councilor Klein. Harper's $1,000 check. <laughs> to start, the, end, the pot's getting bigger already. <coughs> Councilor Klein. I wanted to ask about the $40,000 that you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. So that's not money that would go towards the salary of the two board members. No, it's not. Of money that's O&M that money. Exactly. The, yes. Uh, in or decisions made by the tree warden <clears throat> in conjunction with the new commission. That's, That's correct. correct. It's it's decisions that would be made by the department. It's part of their budget. But obviously, one of the roles of the tree commission is to provide advice and recommendation on on uh, you know on, on tree plantings and on other activities related to trees. And I know that this um, order doesn't. We're not talking budget here with the order, but I'm just, I want to get a little bit more information about what happens with, what can happen with that $40,000. Um, so if this is money that can be used in any way, whether it be a tree inventory or actually planting trees, that's the entire pot of money that is available for the coming year, the coming fiscal year. Have you looked at the other um, at other cities of similar size, other cities that have a tree warden? Um, what kind of budgets they have? Can you give us any sense of where we sit in that um, spectrum? I don't have that information for you, but I can certainly try to try to get that for you. Yeah. And was the was the amount of money um, determined based on kind of projections of what a certain number of trees would cost or what certain activities would cost, anything along I think it was a, it was a uh, during the budget process, working with the DPW, um, focusing on that number, focusing on the fact that it had been at that level for a certain number of years and trying to understand what, what number they felt would be, uh, you know, a, a reasonable jump up in terms of their capacity. And, uh, and so that's, we arrived at increasing it to 40,000. Again, also trying to figure out, you know, how much street paving and, and, a, and a number of other competing interests um, that we're trying to also deal with, bike trail maintenance, um, trying to work on other activities that the DPW has to perform. So, um, so I, I, it was not based on any, uh, you know, metric that we had in mind relative to other communities. It was just an acknowledgement that that number had remained uh, quite low, and that if we were going to try to ramp up our efforts, we would need to make more of a financial commitment. And then that, again, that may be one of the issues that the future Public Shade Tree Commission looks at, is looking at um, relative spending. Now, just because other communities are spending that amount of money, that doesn't mean that we necessarily can also spend that level of money. I, I, you know, it's, you have to look at a number of factors. Um, 
I know our friends across the river are often uh, are often brought up, but I would um, there is a different financial uh, uh, there they have a slightly different financial status than we have, um, so it's that's sometimes not a great comparison. But uh, but I'm but those are the kinds of things I'm I'm definitely open to, and that's a compelling case. Um, I think what's more compelling would be you know trying to come up with this roadmap for you know, this future plan for what we need to do in terms of, uh, in terms of our shade tree inventory um, and then being able to, you know, put, a, put some kind of a price tag on it so that we could build that into a capital plan, for example, um, just like we build capital plans for, you know, roads and water and other infrastructure, sewer and things like that, rec fields, you know, things like that. <coughs> Any comments, question? Um, okay. I th I, um, barring any objection, um, I'd like to move on. We have <laughs> we actually have a pretty significant agenda. This so, um, is everyone comfortable that there's there's been a fair airing of this? Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend any letters that you can send to us that you would CC to uh, Council Secretary as well, Pam Powers, P. Powers at NorthamptonMod.gov. Um, she may include them in the public record so that they'll be part of the document for referral. Um, and you're invited to stay for the rest. Because actually, <laughs> it should be, I sh I, I'd like to point out actually, there are some things that actually are interconnected. This, I mean, to give, you, to give you a sense of scope and how these things are interconnected, not the least of which, of course, is the significant proposed changes uh, f to, uh, to the uh, powers of the BPW and the DPW. But you may have something else that you'd rather do, but I know, just letting you know that that's there. Um, is there uh, something, what else would the council like to address next up on this? Is there anybody else here who has a comment on Is there anyone else? else who has comments on any of the, who has comments or concerns or thoughts on the other proposed administrative orders? Really? <laughs> I mean, the, the, this is a significant document. Uh, Deb. I, I'm not, I guess I don't understand um, uh, as well as I'd like to. Um, what uh, changing the Board of Public Works to a um, uh, sort of gutted, well, I suppose I shouldn't use that word. I don't think that's the intention. But it, it really does change the, um, it really does change how they function. And I know that there are a couple other um, uh, commissions, uh, conservation, and planning who also make decisions that um, they're not elected, they're appointed. And I, um, so I, I guess it never bothered me that um, the BPW also had some um, uh, abilities to, to do certain things. And I, I'm not, I, I guess I, I don't, maybe it's because I don't really understand it that, and it's pretty new to think about I, that I don't, um, I don't feel confident saying I, yeah, this is, no, this those, is a good those idea. Those are all excellent questions. I, I, th I think the, the biggest determinant factor, of course, is who presides over a budget and who signs contracts, and the CONSCOM does not do that. Uh, and, the, and the mayor can speak to this as well, but, and, and any of the counselors as well. The, they do have money at their disposal, however. The, the, I believe the, the council the, gives them <coughs> for the certain. The thing was historically, the Department of Public Works as it evolved, even I think probably preceding 1921 in some level, but it has changed. I think under George Andrew Keaty's aegis, um, they, they finally decided that the, that the director would report to the mayor, which right. previous to that, they were a separate in and of themselves. And, um, in, and in that these are the mayor's changes, I think I'd be appropriate for the mayor to have an opportunity to flesh it out for you. But part of part of this is driven by the, again, the separation of powers and executive administration mm -hmm. division. So, and, and, and I'll just tell you, constituent complaints to me have mostly been along the line of taxation without representation. 
arguments that, that are hard to argue with in some level, that, that people who are not accountable to an election or to the citizens directly um, make uh, financial decisions and choices and, uh, or have historically. I think the, with this stormwater fee that actually changed, they were, the, the BPW worked very hard to do public outreach and the council actually had some oversight in that. But that's historically not been the case. And I know that a number of counselors have also argued for some time that there has to be a line of accountability. I mean, uh, all good citizens who have served on the Board of Public Works have done so with, I, I, I think I can safely say this, well, maybe not. <laughs> there, there might be some historically farther back, but uh, most of the ones that I've known have all done it in the best interest of the city who's serving the best city's interest. But at the same time, when it came down to it, there was no one who could be held to accounts. Uh, if you are outraged by a decision by the council, you can vote against that council and have them run out. You don't have that opportunity with an appointed position. But the and mayor, that, and can't, also it's the also mayor can't rescind an, uh, an appointment? You can, yeah, the mayor can, yes, yeah. It's, but that's that layer of insulation that's always been the on one, I would say some would argue that's a good layer of insulation to have, and, I, and I've heard that, and then there are those who have argued that that's not an appropriate insulation level to have. Councilor? I just want to make one comment, which is I, I share your concerns about this, and um, so we, we may have a robust debate about this particular piece. I hope we do. Piece, so. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilor Adams. Can, can I just ask, because I don't remember. Does it does the mayor have removal power, or is there and is there certain parameters Cause. for costs? Okay, okay, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> not for not for disagreement. I, uh, yeah, this is for cause. Um, so there, I know. There, I think it would be uh, somewhat disruptive if every time someone voted wrong, they suddenly a trap door <laughs> opened and they disappeared. I think that. So I don't think that's the other thing. And I think if you refer to the study. Uh, the, the MRI study that I keep quoting back in 2001, you know, the, the terms are staggered and they are longer than the terms, or they were longer than the terms of the mayor and they're longer than the terms of the city council. So, um, so it's a different set of circumstances than the city council, which all stands election, or the, um, or the school committee that all stands election. Uh, or they will now, actually, they, they did before. So, okay. so I, just following up on uh, Jacob's questioning it, and I do understand that in many communities you do see a streamlining and, and a doing away with a, the kind of uh, committee we have which sets rates and things like that but you'll see the opposite happening I believe isn't it West Springfield that's just beginning to put in a committee to look at water rates and there's a reason why I think historically that also was put in place to kind of in some ways insulate some of our are very important and necessary public things like water that they function well to kind of protect them almost and insulate them from public input in a way to say look we need to have people on here who are not going to be worried about how they're voting next time because you know they feel a little vulnerable if they raise water rates but rather to do it in a way that you appoint another group so I understand both sides of the argument and were you going through any of these kind of thoughts when you were thinking about this, and could you speak to both sides of the issue? Or are you really strongly, I mean, is this, did you come out of this and say, look, this is a, a no-brainer that we do this? I think what it comes down to me is, is um, compatibility with the current structure of government. And, um, and this is a somewhat anomalous, uh, you know, remnant of a more town style of government. Most, mostly around us, towns have boards of public works. They're often the select board. Um, but if you look at pretty much all of the cities, uh, you know, Agawam, Westfield, West Springfield, Chicopee, Holyoke, Pittsfield, Greenfield, they follow this process where, um, you know, the DPW recommends to the mayor and then the mayor must go before the city council and make the recommendation. Um, and, you know, I, I think, um, so I think I think where I come down on it is, and I also do I, I I do think that I think the intent in 2001 I think 
you know, the study in 2001 was looking at the entire department. But one of the things that I had identified was that this was kind of a, um, a structure that di didn't really make sense, even in that, even in our structure as it existed prior to our current charter. Um, that it did create confusion for city residents about who, who, you know, who they should be contacting. Um, and I also think that in terms of comparing it to every other city department, um, every other city department functions um, in sort of a standardized format um, is part of the executive branch. They have to go to the city council for borrowing and spending and, and other authorization. In terms of things like the planning board and the license commission and the, I mean, those are committees that are created under state law. Um, I don't have, you know, I, I don't have a choice to say we're not going to have those. They're committed, they're created under state law and they do have certain powers that are delegated directly by state law. Um, uh, and so, but you know, but you know, they, they, the planning board doesn't change zoning on its own. It still has to go through a process and come to the um, to the elected leader. So, I just think it's more compatible with our system of government. And to be clear, it's not a reflection of the current board members or past board members. I think it's really about the structure. In Amherst, there is no board of any kind like that. Um, the, the department makes a recommendation to the town manager, John Musanti. He has to bring it to the select board for their approval. Um, and I also, am an op I also like to be an optimist about my fellow elected officials that if presented with um, real significant infrastructure needs that um, counselors will rise to that occasion and, and, and vote for them. Um, just like you, just like this council saw the necessity for a stormwater um, enterprise, you know, enterprise fund, um, and uh, and so I and, and the only other thing I'll add is that it's it's strange because even under the current system, you know, the the the, the DPW the board votes on rates, the DPW crafts its budget, submits it to me, I can reduce their budget. Uh, choose not to submit it. I could throw it out the window and write my own DPW budget. I could submit it to you, and you could cut the enterprise funds in half, all of them. You could vote to cut them in half. So in an odd way, you do have a lot of authority over them already. It's just been kind of muted by this, by this system. You'd actually have a strange situation where you'd have the spending would be cut, but the revenue would still be raised. And I, I guess it would just sit there and accumulate. Um, so I think that's, uh, those are some of the issues that, that weigh on me. I do get the piece about being insulated. You know, it's one of the reasons why I'm proud of Massachusetts for not electing judges. I think that's, yeah. that's an important thing. But, when I th but I think it comes to you know, pocketbook issues and you know, our constituents, residents, you know, having to pay taxes and fees and things like that. I do think there should be accountability to elected leaders for those fees and, and taxes. I, can I just? Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I could also argue both sides, and I, I don't strongly disagree. But there's part of this that also feels like there's certain areas. I mean, for example, uh, Proposition Two and a Half is something which I disagree with strongly, mm -hmm. and that we vote whenever we have to raise the taxes. But you could argue the other side that said, "Well, that's democracy. We have to go forward every time and and do that if you want to raise the tax. It's more direct democracy even than the legislative process. Certainly, we can raise people's fees or property taxes and and be voted also, out. I mean, you could also flip the scenario and you could have a council and a mayor that's really urgently concerned about an issue and you could have an appointed body that's insulated and that has staggered terms that outlasts the elected officials' terms uh, that is completely, you know, has no concern about that. I guess that one of my concerns, again, so again, this is not a, a yeah. huge concern, but I do have it. I think most of us know that this has been a very, at least in in my experience, and I've worked closely with the DPW, I've been on the joint committee since I've been a counselor, that we've had an excellent committee. So I've seen something that's been working well. Mm -hmm. And I understand the reason that we have to look at the long-term picture, not just what's happening today. But I think we've had a great group of people who also, like the Energy Commission, we attract people who have a great deal of expertise in this area. I was very involved in the, you know, as you know, on the stormwater thing. And and yet I would defer to people on that committee um, over and over rather than kind of the, there was, you know, people would show up at, a, at some of those meetings and, and with very little knowledge begin to talk about what we should be doing. And I was glad we had that committee mm -hmm. that, that was 
there with that kind of expertise. And I've seen them on a number of issues, the way they debate these things. So I don't disagree that in a way this structure might be kind of old fashioned, but I've also seen something that works. So there's just and part and of I, it that I, And I also want to, you know, someone talked about gutting the committee. I mean, I think the Energy and Sustainability Commission is a perfect example. That's an advisory committee. It doesn't sign energy contracts. It doesn't, it doesn't have any fiduciary powers. It, you know, it, it makes recommendations. It, it recommends policy yeah. changes. It helps inform the departments that it, that it advises. And I see that same role for the Public Works Commission. And I've talked to the chair about it. We've talked about it um, both before and after their most recent meeting, just so he has a clear understanding of it. And I think many of the same issues they'll be talking about um, they'll be discussing many of the same issues about long-term investments, about infrastructure needs, uh, you know, discussing policies and you know, things like that. Um, the difference will be that um, they'll be in an advisory capacity. No, I understand. And, that. The, and that there's a, professionals in the department who have the engineering stamp and who are actually putting their, you know, that are doing this work, this very technical work, are still the ones making many of those day-to-day -day decisions and ultimately if it requires funding or if it requires lawmaking it has to come through the elected uh, to the elected branches of government Councilor O'Donnell and Councilor Adams and Councilor thank you I, I would just like to say that um, I also see both sides of this and the advantage of doing it the way we do it today and the way that, that the mayor is, is proposing and I think it's um, an interesting philosophical debate because, I mean, it's really an old debate about how you run any kind of government. It's sort of how much do we rely on experts versus how much do we rely on, on people. And there's kind of a trade-off. I mean, whenever you have um, a democratic system where counselors, for example, are making decisions, I mean, we're making decisions on zoning, on stormwater, as Councilor Spector pointed out. and. I'm not an engineer or an urban planner, but that's the trade-off. Um, and so I think it's a, a wise decision to give the board of po to uh, give the council the final authority to approve water and sewer rates, um, just as the council will have final authority to approve zoning ordinances. Um, I think it's a it's a fundamental question about how we run government, and I'm I'm glad that we're coming down more on the side of of um, um, the, the sort of democratic um, way of doing it. And I also think that in doing so, we don't sacrifice anything because, as you point out, we'll have these advisory bodies in full effect, um, pr a professional um, Department of Public Works um, backing the process up. So I see it as very healthy, healthy change across the board. Councilor Adams. I support the, the council uh, taking the final vote on water and sewer rates because I think there's, that does lead to greater account public accountability. Um, I have a couple of questions. One of them is um, asking you to address a concern that, that comes from a member of the BPW. I was reading over their minutes of, of, their last, of their meeting last week, and one of the things that one of the members is concerned about is that, that um, the, the board may have a, a it, much harder time, as, as this person put it, getting residents to serve because it diminishes the role and the dynamic will change. And so I think everyone or most people agree that it's been a very, you know, it's been a very functioning, very professional, very learned board. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about that concern? I, I, I'm not concerned because this is a community that, that has a long and strong tradition, as members who serve on the Appointments Committee know, of people stepping forward. Um, and, and I again, I think that we have lots of other committees that pretty much all the other committees are, an advi are advisory committees, with the exception of some of the key regulatory bodies or some that have some adjudicatory powers, but most of them are advisory you know, energy and sustainability, transportation and parking, human rights commission, the public shade tree commission, um, the arts council. I mean, there's a number of our, uh, the, the, the um, council on aging. I mean, these are all, I always have people that are applying for these bodies. So um, I actually, I don't think, um, I don't think that's the case. And I also think that they still have a very important role to play in the process. Um, so I don't think it makes it a meaningless committee by any stretch. Just, um, 
At, at the meeting I had with you yesterday, you, you were discussing some of your, what you expect to be the benefits. Mm -hmm. And you, you were talking about some of the things we were talking here tonight about um, it's a vestige of town governments and this more modernizes it. And, um, and you know, it's, it's more in line with how other agencies within the city work. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's, I'm just trying to bal balance these expected benefits, which to me seem like um, in and of themselves make sense, but may not be um, the best reason to, to disrupt a very functioning board and a very productive board. Um, and as I think Councilor Respected pointed out, I mean, it's, it's working very well. That that may be the perception of the council. That's uh, you I have with issues the about how I just well. feel. I actually feel, um, as the head of the executive branch, that I, I think when I read the MRI study, um, that speaks pretty well. It could be written today in some ways because I do believe that it creates a strange system within the executive branch in terms of the line of authority, in terms of. Um, in terms of uh, decision making, et cetera, um, that I just don't, I, I don't think is appropriate. Um, again, I'm not, it's not that, I'm not saying that the board is doing anything wrong or anything. I'm just saying that it is, um, it's, it's just does not fit within the framework of the rest of the city government and the executive branch in particular. And so I, I do think that it's, uh, it creates issues. I, I think it creates issues. Half the public doesn't even know if it's the BPW or the DPW that plows their streets. Um, uh, you know, from an administrative point of view, the contract issue. Um, you know, uh, Joe Cook, our procurement officer, is uh, he's overjoyed because this creates a whole layer of bureaucracy in terms of these contracts that already go through a full the city's full contracting process. They go through 30B, the procurement process. They're overseen by the state IG, um, and they're reviewed by you know all the professionals in the departments. They're reviewed by the procurement officer, the auditor, the finance director, and ultimately by me. Um, and, uh, and I think that it's, uh, in some cases, it creates an unnecessary level of, of paperwork and bureaucracy that's really not necessary. Um, so I, I, I just think that it's, uh, it's the right change to make. I'll go back to my, my past comment, which says, um, you know, uh, just like just because this is the way we've always done it doesn't mean that it's the correct way to go. We may do this change and we may find, you know, that may not be, maybe we need to rethink that. Maybe we'll, uh, you know, maybe uh, in the future someone will say that maybe we should go back to a different system or a modified system. It's not set in stone. Um, I just believe that uh, short of making this an elected body, which actually it is in some communities, in some towns, the Board of Public Works is an elected position, um, that this really makes it more conform to, uh, to our current structure. Thank God. Councilor Klein. Um, I wanted to ask um, if there would be, I, I don't want to burden your office. I know how hard you've worked on this, but I'm wondering if um, at all possible even before our first vote or at least in between votes we could get a chart that just kind of lays out what the BPW um, currently does and doesn't do how it functions mm -hmm. yeah and next to it a column that just kind of shows the difference um, under this new order okay um, so what their authorities are and what they aren't or are afterwards yeah I mean I can certainly give you a, I can give you an org chart like that. Um, I can tell you that it's basically the chart's not going to change very much. You're just going to basically see a, you know, the director, and you're going to see the BPW off to the side, um, and it's still going to be off to the side. It's just going to be in a different role. I'm not asking for an org chart. I'm asking for a kind of a list of authorities that the and and tasks yeah. that the BPW currently does in its current structure. Okay. And what it will and won't do sure. as a result. Yeah, I mean the story. easiest thing to look at would be I can give you the the special acts that we are uh, deleting that enumerate what their responsibilities were so under like the current situation. Um, and then I can, you know, then you can compare that to what is in the current uh, regulation. The other thing that will be helpful is the order, the ordinance change, which goes through all of the DPW 
uh, ordinances and makes changes to that as well. I guess what I'm asking for is just a simple visual that okay. we just compare <coughs> side by side. Because okay. I know that we can read, sure. um, you know, paragraphs and we can read, look at this, but I, I just think that a simple visual that just gives us a sense of what the tasks and authorities are before and after would be useful. Okay, if you're voting on this tomorrow night, that might be a challenge. Um, if you're not, if you're not doing it until November sixth, then that's something that we'll probably do. Yeah. Or even in between votes, would yeah. be and, and yeah, we do have two readings. This should come to that as yeah. well. So, so. In, in, in line with that, this may have just made me more confused about this. I thought essentially the change was from having the final authority at the, at, on that. Uh, committee, what it's being changed into is, is advisory. Is advisory, yeah. and that That's I didn't understand that there were going to be a lot of other changes. Right now, that if we looked at the chart, am I getting this wrong? Just yeah, okay. that if we looked at this chart that you're saying we should see, basically what we're changing is they don't have the final authority. It moves, but they're still going to be discussing the same issues. Are we? They are will. We, there was some. I mean, obviously, maybe not to the same level of. Of detail, right? Um, for because example, when we get our sand contract every year, um, and we go out to bid, and we go through 30B, and we have to award it to the lowest bidder, that's not really an issue that we need to have the board vote on. That's a, you know, just like when other departments procure okay. equipment or things right, like good. that. So it would be, um, yeah. It's really uh, so. It's I mean, and again, this gets back to the Shade Tree Commission discussion. You know, the boards. You know, they'll, their kind of work and their agenda will partly be a function of how they collaborate with the DPW. I mean, there's not, you see the description, um, but in terms of, I mean, in terms of authorities and responsibility, they don't have, they will not have any direct authority under the current, um, under the new structure. Um, the approval of contracts, the approval of, of water and sewer rates, um, those kinds of things. Uh, so, but I can try to think of a way to illustrate that, or, um, just or at least show how that's being dispersed now. Um, I think, yeah, I can try to figure out a way to do that visually. Uh, Council Murphy and Council Labarge. Mm -hmm. um, no, I do appreciate all the work that those individuals do do, and I, to some extent. While their final decision making may be diminished some, uh, I think about the level of relationship we've had with that body in the last year or so. Them coming to us and explaining to us about the reservoirs and the watershed and how they did that. They did, we did a lot of work with them on the stormwater fee and, and did a lot of activity with them and they gave all the forums and our awards. And that level of expertise I, I still think we need there and those people are advocates for that department and I think they need to be and they'll still serve I think a real human purpose for the professionals there you know if they need to know uh, and sound ideas off and a body that that's a good body to do it um, I have experienced over the time I've been here bewilderment on the behalf of constituents when they ask me about some things and I say well as strange as it seems the City Council doesn't do that the Board of Public Works does that there's sort of this autonomous entity you know, and, and they don't even know who, who they are. In fact, for the Bay State residents, there's two very committed members of that board in Bay State, and some of those residents don't even know. Oh, I know them. Are they on that body? You know, are they the ones that are going to talk to me about does my street live or die? Yeah, they live right in your neighborhood. Ask them. So I think that that is confusing, and this will certainly remove some of that. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, I, to some ways, I think it makes their jobs a little bit easier. Uh, in that they can act more in an advisory role. Just a question, uh, at this point, I know they assumed the role of the water commissioners. Yes. Does that now fall to us, more or less, to make No, it doesn't, things? actually. So they'll remain the... No, they will not be the water commissioners. No, that, 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 I mean, the water, the water commissioners, again, was a special act mm -hmm. by the city of Northampton. Mm -hmm. And as just like the... the you know the parks commissioners so, all the other you know our our creation of the board of there is no bpw in state law there's no requirement that cities or towns have this body so what basically will happen will be what happens in every other city and including in amherst next door is that the dpw makes recommendations 
uh, and, and you are the approval authority. Oh, okay. Um, so, we, so I mean, you, I guess you could say you're a water commissioner. Well, in the um, sense that, but well, you know, if, if a body has to vote on those decisions, those rights. Yes. So just like the board of selectmen in 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 Amherst would technically be, I guess they could say they're acting as the final decision maker on rates. Yeah. yeah. And they have had, you know, I've been trying to compare this new version of. Uh, the board to the planning board, who, who is authorized to a great, you know, under state law, and their role is defined. What happens to their permitting role? The yeah, the per of public works, permitting role. I know they permit. Yeah, the permitting state. role really will go to the professionals within the department, okay. which is what it is in most other city departments. Um, permits, uh, you know, we're, t we're not talking about a special permit or a variance or a site plan, which is a very specific thing, but our city has adopted state law that allows for the collector to issue a municipal lien certificate or the police department to issue parade permits or you know just every other department issues their own permits they don't have a separate board um, voting and issuing permits so that will become professionalized um, the only other function uh, that that's called out in the charter is the um, there is a claims function adjudication of claims and my belief is similar to the counselor's claim role that, and that's the recommendation of the city solicitor that we should really move toward that model of our liability insurance uh, adjudicating those claims um, to be consistent and to get our money's worth out of paying a, a um, paving for insurance every year. Um, so that's uh, so that's really the only other uh, pieces that that would get dispersed somewhere else. Because they know with their with their role, uh, with regards to the street acceptances, they do the legwork, they deal with the public, they mm -hmm. but they recommend to us and we make the final decision. Exactly. And so that's what their role would continue to be: do research, have discussions, make recommendations. They'll make recommendations, but it'll be the department that'll bring forward the recommendations ultimately to oh. the city. Yeah. As as much of it is now, because yeah. usually when. Well, one of the board members may be here. We're always asking one of the engineers, you know, the criteria. Mm -hmm. You know, what's go, what's in the street, what's this, what's that. So, okay, thank you. Okay, council. Thank you. Um, I think Not this sure structure yet. is of importance, and there's no question about it. I agree with what you want to do, Mayor, on changing the structure. I do know, as a city councilor, I've had many residents for many years who really felt very uncomfortable with the way the Board of Public Works was in process. And even now hearing from my residents, they're very happy about this structure, which they feel that this change is of importance to them. Um, my question, Mayor, is now that we're going into an advisory um, capacity, it will be the same people that are on that advisory. All right, so say that they, after their term is over, because they still will have terms, two years, yes. or are they going to be alternating again, some two, three, four, or whatever? Uh, this board uh, will be like all of our other boards, unless there's some other specific. It's, I think it's a three-year term, and it's staggered. You know, we're, We'll continue to try to stagger them. Um, that's kind of our standard format. Okay. Um, but I think you're going in the right direction. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? Other oh, no, I just, if, if there's, because, you know, we're just sort of engaging in our discussion here, I would say that if there's no more specific public comment, I think we only have one member of the public really left here, that I would move we close the public hearing since there's no more public comments. Uh, 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 Councillor Adams, did you have a comment? On that? I just want to point out that, <clears throat> um, the council, the, the mayor appoints um, all BPW members, or e even after the change, that would still be the same. Um, however, being that the powers of the BPW would be diminished under this change, that also diminishes the powers of the city council, because because of, based on that reasoning. Now to uh, Council Murphy's point. Um, 
I'm a little I'm a little concerned about closing public hearing in the pro uh, I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm and closing the whole public hearing. I mean, we yeah, I, I have numerous things to other things to discuss. Well, it, yeah, I mean, that's the purpose of this hearing is an informational gathering, and there are there are we have we have a lot more to address. There may not be public contribution by anyone signed up here, but I think in order to keep the hearing open and in the possibility that someone might, and also should this hearing continue. It would have to continue in the capacity of, as a public hearing. So to close it would, I, I don't see the value in closing it just now. Maybe, maybe you're suggesting that these discussions, that we, the questions we have directly for the mayor can take place outside of the public hearing? Is that yeah, what I mean, the public okay. hearing exists to take public input. Yeah. Yeah. If there's no public here, I mean, but we can keep, the, you know, keep the public hearing going. That was my you question to almost earlier to you that we're going to have a, you know, there are a lot of people who would watch this mm -hmm. we're at a council meeting who are probably not watching this evening. That's why I wasn't clear on the process of our involvement. Well, I, in I would also debate. say, though, if you read the language of Article 6, which describes the process for this, it, it says that the city council should hold a minimum of at least one public hearing, uh -huh. which implies that. I don't know that this is like a monolithic planning, you know, public hearing that has to stay open forever. I mean, oh, okay. you could you, say you could have you could another you could convene another public hearing. Yeah. This isn't like a chapter, you know, a 40 uh, zoning hearing that you open right. it and then you if you close it, the clock starts ticking. Um, it does seem to envision in Article Six that you could have multiple. It just says you you have to have at least one public hearing, but you could have you know one a week for the next uh, three months. Yeah, Colleen, did you want to speak? The order would go. Up. You got to step up, though. Excuse me. One of our original charter uh, advisory committee. That's right. The new charter. It took us a year to say that. Um, you have to identify my, yourself and your and your address, and then. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Colleen it's Curry, two zero three State Street. Um, my understanding of public hearing was informational. I understand that a lot of times you have um, public comment periods, but I came because I was curious about what the brouhaha was. Mm -hmm. and I haven't had time to read the document, um, but there was obviously concern about having it um, presented, presumably without input. I don't know whether that's accurate or not, but I came to be informed um, until 7 o'clock. <laughs> I'd like to stay. Okay. And there is there there are more points to discuss here. So at least for the for yeah. the purpose sure. of this hearing, I see no reason in closing. Uh, uh, Council Labarge. I just heard um, Councilor Adams make a statement to the effect that with the Board of Public Works losing their power, that City Council would also lose their power. Can you explain? Sure. Here, here's what I mean by that. One of the one of the duties, responsibilities, I guess you could call powers. I, I refer to it as a power. Is that when the when the mayor makes appointments to multiple member bodies, mm -hmm. we we have the power to say yes or no to each member. Right. That's appointed. Being that you decrease the the um, the responsibilities and du duties and powers of the public works, if that change were to pass, in my opinion, that means that we are appointing members to a body that has less power. And that, in turn, in my opinion, decreases council power. That's just my opinion. My only counterpoint would be I'm conferring most of the major powers of the BPW <laughs> onto the city council. Well, so that would be the other. Those, uh, uh, yes, I, I agree. I agree for the well for the water and sewer. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know what Storm other water and you know that's all. Well, we well we have well we already have that. You but, do, but exactly. we already had that, so that's not new. But my point is that um, uh, so, so uh, certainly I agree to that with the, with with the with um, to the extent of water and sewer fees. I don't know what else, though. Mm -hmm. so. Any other comments relative to well, since we've we've leapfrogged over to this section, and clearly I think we've touched on the two that seem to generate the most concern. Are there are any more discussion questions or input on the changes uh, the mayor is proposing to make for the EPW, principally, and then more, and then allocating more power. <coughs> Or at least authority to the DPW. Councilor, no. just just curious, <coughs> did, did you explore at all changing the number or composition of the DPW? 
You just thought we have good people, keep it large. I didn't insane. because I didn't, again, I didn't want to, I, I, I wanted to be clear to the current members that I wasn't, it wasn't a reflection of them or their service. And so I was trying to just for consistency, keep it the same. Um, it's at seven right now. And I think that's a good sized number for an advisory board in terms of maintaining quorum and you know the usual absences that happen. So it seemed like it was a good, a good number. So we just sort of kept it. Um, if I, you know, some actually, some cities have three member commissions, but I thought that would have been, um, then it would have, uh, yeah, created a strange situation. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Klein. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to share with us the, any kind of um, points or highlights of the discussions that you had with people from the BPW, if in fact you did, and the DPW and where they stand um, on this matter of uh, kind of decreasing the power of the BPW. Yeah, I, I can, I mean, I, I spoke with the, um, I did speak with the director and the um, city engineer Mr. Laurel about it. I've spoken to the highway superintendent about it, um, primarily in relation to the tree issue, but just also the larger issues. Um, and I have had um, two conversations with um, the chair of the Board of Public Works, Terry Culhane. Um, and because uh, I felt as the chair, I should, I should speak through him. Um, and they did discuss it at their last meeting, and then we had a follow-up conversation where he had some clarifying questions. And again, I think it's a, I think the questions were, um, as you would expect, you know, this is a significant change, and just trying to understand the rationale for it. And it was an opportunity for me to explain that it was not any, again, not a reflection of anything that the board had done, just more in terms of the larger issue of the structure of government and how it conforms to that. You know, I think there is, I did hear um, that concern that Councilor Specter, you know, that, that kind of trade off between being appoint, you know, appointed officials um, versus elected officials. And, you know, uh, you know and, and there's always a tendency to say, you know, th this issue should not be political. And I remember when we had, you know, when we made some similar structural changes to the Board of Health. I heard that same thing, that, oh, health is different than anything else, and that cannot be political. Um, and everybody feels passionate about their particular area, and they think that that, you know, but, I mean, uh, this is a government that's democratically elected, and so it's really, unless you're going to move to some administrative state, or uh, then you're, you're, there's no way you can escape that. Um, so I think, uh, so I think that, that there were those kinds of concerns, you know, in terms of like the, um, you know, DPW being concerned that, um, that, that they wouldn't have the same level of support, for example, um, for initiatives, th those kinds of things. But I think we talk them through and I think they understand it. And, um, and again, I really, I, you know, I'm a broken record, but I really do think that when you look at the MRI study, that that really did speak a lot to the, to some of the issues that were at play even back then. I mean, there was a, it was a time when the deep that when you know there was a lot of conflict between uh, City Hall and the Board of Public Works, and there had been even times of greater conflict. Um, and uh, and this study came out of that, and um, and you know there was a number of recommendations made. There was one significant recommendation. There was one significant change implemented that the uh, that the mayor became the supervisor of the DPW director, not the board, but it still left in place many of the other issues that the report talked about. So um, I kind of feel like this is another, this is sort of the unfinished work of that last effort at reforming the, the process. So so that's sort of the, th those are the kinds of issues that came up. Um, I have a you you, you saw it before. Um, in speaking to someone, I don't, uh, don't want to engage in hearsay here, but in speaking to someone within the DPW, one of the concerns that I heard was the levels of knowledge that we as counselors mm -hmm. would need to make certain decisions yeah. about very technical matters um, is pretty daunting. And I'm just wondering if that's a concern that you've taken. It's not because I don't actually expect the counselors to make highly technical decisions. I really think that's where that that's the distinction. I think the department who are the professionals who we are paying um, 
them many cases more than you know they're 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 earning significant sums they have advanced degrees they have certifications they're making many of the technical decisions and um, and we're relying on them for that uh, and then we have to take we have to then process that in the context of approving funding uh, etc so I, I'm not expecting this I'm not expecting the council to suddenly transform into the board of public works and every you know every issue is going to be brought to you in that same level of detail. Um, what I'm saying is that, like our other professional departments, uh, we can do the work that we need to do as professionals administering these city agencies, um, and then the council can do its role. As you know, counselor, you know uh, you, you do have to kind of be a jack of all trades when you're a counselor. You're 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 having to deal with a lot of different issues, and you're dealing with them at a different level than than the folks that are the professionals. And I think that would be the same here. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I'm not as concerned about that. I know that there's a concern about that. One could also say that you know, is it healthy for a department to have you know a separate body that's so ingrained into that department that's, you know, sort of the sole um, feedback loop for decisions that are happening there. Should there be more outside oversight? Should the, you know, should they go up further up the chain of command? I think there's a, a compelling argument for that. Council Lubart. Yes. Um, I think Councilor Specter, Councilor Bill White, and I and we're highly involved when I'm pretty sure you were, Councilor Dwight, which the mayor just had talked about a problem that the mayor, our former mayor way back, first one, had a problem with the Board of Public Works, which was a serious problem, where we had a death of a woman on South Street because of the roads and the conditions that the roads were so, so deplorable that us councilors had gotten calls from many people throughout the city, and I'm just using that as an example because it's a, a, a good thing here that you mention that. The Board of Public Works Director refused. Department of Public Works Director. Yeah, huh? the DPW Director. Right, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. The um, BPW Director refused to come to City Council. Do you remember that, Councilor Inspector? There was a big problem. A mayor asked that Department. director yeah. to come to city council and he said I don't have to well he finally did come because the mayor had said to him if he did not come there would be a problem he did come and he heard what the counselors had to say of their concerns that he really made a huge mistake that's when us counselors got together and we decided to help that mayor out to open the doors so that mayor would have more authority of working with the director of the Board of Public Works. So there's a lot involved here, and I have to say that I think that the changing of this structure is of importance, and there's no question about it. And I commend the, um, the board. I think they've done a great job in everything, but I also think that the study is of value here. There was money put into the study, and this is what they're suggesting, and I think the mayor is going in the right direction. Okay, so um, if everyone's comfortable, we have four minutes to move on, or we can decide that there, there are actually are a number of other points. There's some other constituent points that uh, have been brought up. Uh, uh, the first one leaps to mind, of course, is the renaming of the fire department was one concern. Um, the, I believe I submitted. Did I? I submitted a memo. We have a memo Chief from uh, Chief Duggan. Okay. That yeah. that would be worth sharing for the public. There's also the issue of uh, formally committees such as the Energy Commission, which has often been invoked this evening. Uh, you remember, you recall it had two council members. In fact, the council president had to be on it. Um, now, in the separation of powers aspect, the mayor. He's not does not have the authority to make counselors sit on any of these committees and we have to figure out how we address that we're also going to have to figure out the there there are two uh, liaison committees essentially the for the school committee and for the Department of Public Works personally I would like us to um, develop um, similar to public safety committee uh, public works committee for the council 
for the same purpose of calling in department head, okay. having a report from the department head and being updated so that, that given our, our our absence of expertise, at least to keeping apprised and doing our political work. It also assumes the passage of the order. That also assumes the passage Absolutely. of the Absolutely. That's a, yeah. And exactly. So, so I, I don't want to, here's my concern. I don't want to talk like an auctioneer for the next five minutes trying to get everything jammed into one to finish this, this hearing. Well, you, I mean, you can also, these questions could come up in your deliberation, I suppose, yeah. as well. I mean, it, they're not, I don't know that. That's true, too. Hearing. It's just that some of them are actually gener are public generated. Okay, perfect. My other concern is, is that actually we haven't heard, no one from the BPW gained to speak tonight on the points that, I mean, we had to have you translate for them, which makes me feel really uncomfortable putting you in that position. And two, mm -hmm. um, have, I would like to hear from them. As far as their point, well, they knew about. They did know about the did, hearing. I just, I'm not sure. I did that, speak yeah. to a couple of members, but just to your final question, just to be clear, the <coughs> couple of things you were just pointing out are actions that the council would take if this passes, which is a separate issue, correct? For I'm, example, I, you referred to the uh, right, right, right. The, the establishment of so yes, that's, yes, that's totally would, separate. Yeah, so we have to yeah. pass this. Then that's our work to do. Of what do we do? That's not. It, it may be tangentially part of our discussion about this, but it's not directly involved with the mayor's order. But I think he was, I think you may have been referring to the vacuum that might be created right. by the elimination of the joint committee. And, um, and, I, and I think that an needs a, as an interface between the department and the county. I think it's a larger discussion for the public's purposes okay. uh, than the three minutes we have remaining. Uh, Council Chair. Um, I also think there was some public concern that a five o'clock hearing left some people out who couldn't make it. Uh, perhaps we should schedule another one that, that starts later than five. And this, the fact is we have room here. Um, we have a, the city is functioning, and it's functioning quite well. There is no drop-dead deadline here. Um, there has also been expressed concern about the, the, you know, the amount of due diligence and the, or the absence of due diligence. And, and I mean, it could be that the next meeting no one shows up, and everyone's maybe everyone's got two questions, and then Council Labarge can hand out candy, and we can go home. But uh, I, I think there's nothing right. pressing to have it on the agenda for tomorrow. And I just um, noticed that we have um, some new people from the public. I'm just wondering if we need in our last few minutes to just see if anybody else wants to make any public comment. Uh, is 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 there anyone in the public who would be interested in speaking at any point in the administrative orders of, uh, at this point? We didn't want to put anyone on the spot, right. but I also just want us to. to probably, probably here for a different meeting altogether. So, uh, Council Inspector. If and when, and it seems like we probably would have another uh, public uh, meeting on this. Would we? I'm just concerned that we go back and it starts with a bunch of people talking about the tree th thing. Yeah. Would how would you see that setting up? That we'll say, well, look, it's all we we're we're going to start again. I think the thing with the public hearing is new information. Okay. Is if new information is new. presented, not not a reiteration. I think I, I think that uh, the tree folks have actually been very concise in their presentation. Right. And their point. So well, that's uh, right. So if it's if it's new information that's yeah. being presented yeah. or information we've not covered in this, well, I would hope that if someone did want to speak on the tree issue or the BPW yeah. issue, we, they could come and speak on that at, at another forum if they that's didn't the, weren't able to make this one. I agree. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think. In the main, what we're discussing, and the significant change, is the line of open governance, uh, best practices, and, and accountability by elected officials. And I think that subscribes to that very, that, okay. that tenet. And I, I, I like to abide by that. Err on the side of caution and remove one agenda item. I mean, you know, you should be happy it's with fine. that. It's, it's, you know. We're done with trees. What's that? <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's if we're going to continue, should we pick a time? Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, do, do we close this public hearing and then open another? Yeah, why don't we? Why don't we close this public hearing tomorrow night? I'll announce the. What we'll, we can. We, we will announce the next public hearing. How's okay. That? We'll close it for close the hearing. Is my understanding? Yeah. No. Uh, actually, the mayor pointed out correctly that we there are hearings and this there is no clock ticking in so far oh, okay. as keeping it open, and I agree with that. So I think that if we close this yeah. public hearing. Sorry. And adjourn this hearing, and then we can reconvene with the intent of reconvening at another time okay. with another hearing, another and public hearing, possibly at a different time, possibly a different location. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can take this I up the road, it. JFK. Okay. Well, we'll discuss that. But in the meantime, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn and uh, close the public hearing. Close. Second.
Any discussion? All the, oh, no, no discussion on uh, adjournment. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you all very much.